North Korea backs off, Iran steps forward. That's, That's right. what's happening. All right. An Iranian drone caught again shadowing a U.S. aircraft carrier in the Persian Gulf. Now, the drone came within 1,000 feet of F-18 fighter jets on the USS Nimitz. And they're small, of course, these drones, but they put the lives of American pilots at risk. This is the second provocation in a week. Last Tuesday, an Iranian drone came within 100 feet of an F-18 preparing to land on the Nimitz. Coming into us, Iran threatening to quit the nuke deal if the U.S. imposes new sanctions. Liz, they say they will quit, quote, within hours. The main argument against it was Iran wouldn't abide by the deal, that they would cheat. We now have over a year of evidence that they have abided by the agreement. و این ترجیح جمهوری اسلامی ایران است ولی تنها گزینه کشور نبوده و نخواهد بود That's not just my opinion it's not just people in my administration that's the opinion of Israeli military and intelligence officers uh, who are part of a government that vehemently opposed the deal so my suspicion is, is that when the president-elect comes in and he's consulting with his Republican colleagues on the Hill, that they will look at the facts. Because to unravel a deal that's working and preventing Iran from pursuing a nuclear weapon uh, would be hard to explain. Uh, and you know, for us to pull out would then require us to start sanctioning those other countries in Europe or China or Russia that were still abiding by the deal because from their perspective uh, Iran had done what it was supposed to do. Now we're, we're tracking reports coming in that Iran just allocated more than a half a billion dollars to a new missile program there. And this is in response to those tough new Senate sanctions on Iran, Russia, North Korea. The Iranian individuals are targeted by these new sanctions. Iran not liking that. So it looks like Iran is ramping up the rhetoric saying we will bring it to a more advanced, our nuclear program to a more advanced pro, uh, level than it was in 2015. Candidates, you may not have seen the late developing news today. Our Fox Pentagon team broke earlier this evening about a top Iranian general traveling to Moscow to meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin. His name is General Qasem Soleimani. He's blamed for hundreds of U.S. troop deaths in Iraq and Afghanistan. His trip to Russia appears to directly violate U.N. Security Council resolutions to confine him to Iran. So, Mr. Trump, if you were president, how would you respond to this? I would be so different from what you have right now, like the polar opposite. You look at Sergeant Bergdahl, we get Bergdahl, a traitor, and they get five of the big, great killers, leaders that they want. We have people in Washington that don't know what they're doing. We're making a deal. You would say, we want him. We want him. We want our prisoners. We want all these things. We don't get anything. We're giving them $150 billion plus. They are going to be, I'll tell you what, if Iran was a stock, you folks should go out and buy it right now because you'll quadruple. This, what's happened in Iran is a disgrace and it's going to lead to destruction in large portions of the world. Iran's Defense Minister nominee Brigadier General Amir Hatami stresses that the ministry will continue to boost the country's ballistic and cruise missile power as well as air defense capabilities. As for 
uh, upgrading combat capabilities of the uh, defense industries of the defense ministry in the next four years we will make every effort to maintain the current capabilities and at the same time uh, secure the operational objectives of the program in this program in this period the defense missile power especially the ballistic and cruise uh, missiles we will improve that and we will improve our air defense capability two members of what President Bush once referred to as the axis of evil. U.S. intelligence officials saying that North Korea and Iran may be sharing dangerous military technology. At the center of all this, ballistic missiles, which both nations are banned from developing. Both countries, Iran and North Korea, view ballistic missiles as key to their survival, not only as a way to project force regionally, but to take on the United States itself, possibly be able to fire on the U.S. mainland. We certainly know North Korea wants to do that. Iran tried to test a cruise missile from a midget submarine in the Strait of Hormuz, raising serious eyebrows at the Pentagon because of exactly the design of this midget submarine, which is a carbon copy of the North Korean's midget submarine. So it becomes more difficult, I think, to uh, uh, undo something that's working than undo something that isn't working. But the submarine is of a North Korean design. The very first missiles we saw in Iran were simply copies of North Korean missiles. And over the years, uh, we've seen photographs of North Korean and Iranian officials in each other's countries, and we've seen all kinds of common hardware and design approaches. Well, now, neither country, Iran or North Korea, yet possesses long-range ICBM, Shannon, but defense experts have long warned that whatever North Korea develops, either from its nuclear program or from its missile program, Iran can have for the right price. What does the Pentagon propose to do? Well, it's difficult for military planners here, and earlier uh, this month, a couple of days ago, it was the admiral who was in charge of all U.S. military forces in the Pacific who sounded the alarm bells, really saying the United States and its military planners' hands are tied by a Cold War-era treaty. Now, that treaty forbids the United States from deploying either short or medium-range missiles those missiles are things that the North Koreans and the Iranians have by the truckload, Shannon, and obviously they would be, have no problem using them in a conflict, whether it be around the Straits of Hormuz for Iran or against South Korea where the, all those U.S. troops are if the North Koreans went to war. General, thank you for joining us today. How concerned are you about these two in particular getting together, and is this evidence strong in your point of view? Oh yeah, overwhelmingly so. This is a 20 plus year close relationship. The, uh, the Iranians are actually following the North Korean playbook about as close as you possibly can. The, the North Koreans in the 90s negotiated with us and others, lying to us about uh, their nuclear intentions. Meanwhile, they had secret sites and they were in fact developing a nuclear weapon. And then in 2003, they declared that they had it. Uh, the Iranians were doing very much the same thing, negotiating with us, telling us that they're, they're only building nuclear power for energy, not for weapons. They had secret sites. What, what happened in Iran, we found those secret sites because of some informants, and they, they, they were exposed. But they follow the exact playbook. Their missiles are exact replicas, by and large, of North Korean missiles. Their nuclear technology is North Korean technology. They both want to have nuclear weapons to be sure. The Iranians have never given up on that. They both want ballistic missiles and they want to be able to fire them from the surface and also from the subsurface. And North Korea is leading the technology and engineering effort on all of that. Uh, talk to me, if you will, about the urgency now and the talk and the reporting that we're, we're also witnessing at this, in this era uh, about Iran and North Korea. Well, Iran, I believe, is, is a major threat in the Middle East, much more so than radical Islamists, who clearly are a threat. We see the evidence of that all the time as they run around the world killing people. But the Iranians are a much more serious threat. They have conventional military, they have missiles, they're developing ballistic missiles, and they want a nuclear weapon. And according to the deal that the previous administration made, they are likely to...